Oh, you've never been to Australia? Let me tell you about it. There's, uh... There's, uh... Um... There's, there's a lot of stuff in Australia. There's, like, uh... There's, like... This is the card, this is the track, and this must have taken a lot of fucking balls. <laughs> First race of the week at Bathurst, starting P2, Joey right behind us in P3, and getting underway. Take a guess about how our launch is going to go. Not fantastic. Surin immediately pulling a couple of tenths away. Joey is uh, not having the greatest launch either. He is kind of getting packed up by us, not going to lie. Momentarily goes side by side with Travis, who ends up losing a position to Dano Wolf on the inside. So Dano moving from P5 up to P4, Travis moving backwards one position, and uh, a couple of little battles going on down this hill. This guy is, I, I don't know how he was able to maneuver himself. I mean, he ends up losing a lot of time, but there's actually somebody right ahead of him. You can see the sparks flying. This guy is literally invisible for like almost the entirety of the race. Anyway, we are making our way up the mountain just fine. Pretty safe. Car number 16 behind us. This is P6 sliding out. Car number five hitting him. Josh Garner getting caught up in this. 11 trying to go around the outside. Ends up clipping five, and then he ends up literally facing backwards on the track at I mean, first ascent up the mountain, and then what? <laughs> Literally lets everybody go except for car number 20. Uh, meanwhile, we are making our way through the dipper at the moment, followed closely behind by Joey and then uh, Dano right behind him, with a pretty massive gap all the way back to uh, P6 right here. He's just going through the dippers. We're kind of entering into the elbow already. Now, skipping ahead to the final lap, honestly, not a ton happened on this race. Uh, I think Dano disconnected, and he actually ends up reconnecting. Joey is hold fending off Ryan Betts behind him, and then Dano is following him around through the elbow for the final time, leading onto the Conrad straight. And uh, this is a peculiar situation for Joey. He is definitely under some high pressure. Uh, Ryan is going to have the slipstream all of the way down the extremely long straight. Dano is following behind them, but Dano is a lap down, so it's really a, just a fight between these two. Ryan looking up the inside, which turns to the outside uh, for the chase, but he firmly gets all the way ahead of him and then cuts into the inside, so clean run and uh, well done by both drivers to stay safe through there. That does... Uh, Joey did have some... some uh, top speed damage so he wasn't really able to fight that very much as you could see and heading to the final corner Dano a lap down looking up the inside of Joey ends up uh hitting him there and making contact but Joey gets across the line just fine and Dano actually hopped into the discord and apologized for that so here are the results that first one a pretty solid first race of the week gaining 55 I rating uh some safety rating as well which is always a bonus not really expected of me all that often and into the next race I'm just going to cut ahead to lap four because not much had happened up until this point and honestly there wasn't much of this race left to go looking to go up the inside and I totally screw myself just taking way too much of that curb into the wall I go and a really really uh big mistake for myself like there was a lot more space there so we got absolutely shafted with that one into the third race of the day hoping to make up some of what we just lost we're starting in p6 as car number five the top guys are running 205s we are nowhere near that at the moment we are about a second behind them running 206s joey just ahead of us and uh, let's get underway with lap one joey moving ahead to uh to take the racing line through here i'm not going to put him under pressure we know how my launches go the cars behind me actually don't get that great of a launch either though so i am safe dano is side by side with ryan momentarily it looks like uh ryan settles back ahead of him there and everybody is going to take the inside on that first corner on this track that is kind of like a huge overtaking opportunity by the time we are coming through the dipper still in p6 and we have a gap building behind us to p7 which is always nice and that seems to happen pretty often on this track as well like throughout the first lap uh, gap tends to get formed behind typically like the top four or the top five to everybody else and it was really no different this race so about less than a second behind Joey just barely soaking up his slipstream and the p1 is running away it seems like everybody behind p1 is starting to condense however I make a massive mistake there through the chase sliding out and getting caught in this position this guy going behind me I have to let literally everybody pass just about I think I rejoined the track in p20 here so obviously a massive mistake from myself, nobody to blame but myself there, carried way too much speed into the chase and 
I mean, yeah, that's that is where we end up. So we have a lot of time to make up. Currently losing 113 I rating if we were to stay in this position. So I have to get a move on by lap number two as we are coming through sunset and towards the dipper or skyline and towards the dipper. Excuse me. We are beginning to catch P19 and 18. They seem to be having some sort of a battle here. Should I get a good run through the elbow? I should be able to make up even even more time. Uh, I'm not very good through this corner, but relative to them, my run was not that bad. 18 hits the wall. That's going to slow him down a tremendous amount. They actually end up side by side, and I'm kind of stuck as I'm scared to go to the left there for a second. That guy's blinking in and out, and I'm trying to decide who to follow through. Eventually settle on car number 17 as he is the one who did not run into the wall, was able to carry slightly more speed, and that should get us past 21 and we will be clear of him before we get to the chase. I'm gonna back off just ever so slightly of P18 now, uh, Zhang ahead of me. Don't wanna put him under too much pressure here. And you know the next big overtaking opportunity is down between turn one and turn two. So I'm aiming for that right now as my uh, spot. Just gonna follow behind him, soak up the slipstream, look for a good run out of turn one. There's somebody facing backwards on the start finish line. So that will be another position for us now, up into P18, looking to hunt down P17 as we cross the line onto lap three, making sure to get a solid run here. We have the slipstream. He does not, shouldn't be too dramatic. You can make this move work around the outside of corner two as well. It's a bit more difficult, but it's definitely possible. He actually ends up moving to the inside, slowing down to let us through. So we are able to get a clear run all of the way through the mountain and hopefully make up some time. And pretty soon, here we are, lap number four, onto the back of P16 now, Marco. And I'm gonna play this one all the way through our, uh, our run up the mountain, teasing a move up the inside here, not quite going for it. This is a bit controversial. I mean, it's really not controversial. I do something absolutely horrendously stupid here. But on the bright side, it is something that I learned from. Um, but yeah, I, I will... I won't say what it is, you'll just have to watch and find out as we chase Marco up the mountain, actually closing up the gap as well to uh, car number 14 in, or um, excuse me, P14, letting off of the throttle there as we know that we are a bit faster than Marco here. He's running 209s and uh, on a clear lap, we are running 206s to low 207s. So I definitely have the pace and I think that got into my head. Also, I'm still trying to negate the I rating loss, currently losing 84 I rating. And I was having to lift a lot up the mountain for him. Going down the mountain, he has a bit of a lockup. Rough run through here, and this is... <laughs> oh my... Ah, God. It, like, the space was not there. It really was not there. I completely forced my way through there. Neither of us got damage, fortunately. And then through the elbow, he has a bit of a rough run as well. I mean, obviously, my car shouldn't have been there. We end up making contact through there. Both of us getting out, though. And uh, he's not, he's not uh, very happy about that, as you could probably guess. Here is my cockpit view of this just all of the way through, just so you can see how aggressive it was. And uh, it was tremendously aggressive. And I'll show the uh, voice chat as well here. What is wrong with you, Aiden? Tell me, please, what is wrong with you? It's not my fault you're in the back. I'm sorry, that was super aggressive. Super, super aggressive. I mean, so unnecessary. You could have got me on the straight, man. Why there? Silencio Bruno, that's in my own head. I won't do that again, I'm sorry. Now, I typically do not engage in voice chat, but when I do something like that, I do turn it on to apologize. Uh, so I am sorry about that, Marco. And I, I was really trying to apologize as quickly as I could because I wanted to continue to move forward as fast as I can. I'm, I, I still am running out of time, and I'm conscious that I need to make moves happen quickly. I'm still losing 75 I rating at this point, and after losing 99 in that previous race, I would really like to make some of it back here. Chasing Ryan down uh, towards turn two, he's going to leave the inside open for me, which means he's probably not looking to fight this at all. Uh, typically, you're going to guard the inside if you want to fight that. The inside has a much higher percentage of working out for you. Now chasing down car number 11, and I think that's car number 20, as they make their way down the mountain and through Forest Elbow. 20 locks up his tires. That should slow him down a tremendous amount. I'm seeing the tire smoke, and there he is. 20 has fallen back a bit, so we are now chasing him down, and we're actually just about going to reach that slipstream, which will help us catch up to him by the next lap, lap number seven. We are right on his tail as we head up towards the top of the mountain, and uh, sadly not going to be able to make a move work before the mountain, which means we're going to be stuck behind him, potentially losing time, depending on how his run is, because we're kind of limited to his run. I don't know if you saw that, but um, I'll play it a 
and play it back in slow motion just so you can take a second look around the screen, see if you notice anything there. So yeah, we will move up to P14 by virtue of this guy who's Austin powered it in the worst spot. This is how that happened. And I mean, honestly for, I mean, this could have been way, way worse for him. So he slides out going up there and he's literally stuck in the middle of the track. Everybody able to get around him though. Props to everybody for, um, you know, adjusting their lines to that and being able to avoid that. And then he kind of tucks himself into this corner as we pass by him. So back on track with us, we are up to P14 now. And gaining that free position, honestly, I think it helped set, like uh, calm my nerves a little bit and just be like, okay, I can take it a little bit slower. I don't have to push so hard. I just got a free position. Uh, we gained a little bit of I rating from that. And then look at this. There's another guy. Don't know what happened here. Literally just parked in the dirt. Another position. So uh, even though, I mean, like we could have looked for a move around this guy, it would have been intensely aggressive and completely unnecessary. But uh, we could have. And there's a world where I may have done that, but instead we opted to lift multiple times up the mountain and we still gained two positions, uh, really not virtue of anything he did or I did, but you know, it's just good to be patient sometimes. It's, I mean, it's necessary to be patient sometimes. As we head into the chase, we are right on his tail and it looks like P11 has actually had a bit of a rough run, potentially out of the elbow as he is now only half of a second away from us. Looking around the outside, as we gain another position through the final corner, somebody is in the pit lane. So we're gonna go around the outside here and gain a another position. So now we should be up into P11, I believe, uh, crossing onto lap number eight, looking for a top 10 now. So that lap gaining four positions, which is just ridiculous. We really didn't do anything there. And I think that's a big part of this track is just like knowing that stuff is gonna happen. You, If you start in P19, 20 even if you botch your qualifying there's a high likelihood that you climb your way back up if you just drive clean and safe so putting Guillermo under pressure for P10 he's holding the outside for this next corner which turns into the inside for the chase and we're going to try and make use of our slingshot moving uh, out of the slipstream to the right side of the track and we're just about a full car length ahead going into the chase and I thought he was going to fight that but he ends up settling back uh, thank you, Guillermo, and that will move us up into P9. We are almost breaking even, or I'm um, excuse me, P10, almost breaking even at this point for um, I rating. Only 18 lost at the moment. By the time the penultimate lap comes around, we have caught uh, Be Beaven, Bevan, Dunlop. I don't know how to say that name uh, for a potential P9 as we head up the mountain. So we have this lap and one more. Only a 12 lap race right behind him as we go through turn two, actually taking a bit of a tighter line there, which yields us a slightly better run. He moves over to the right to open up this next corner and we go up the inside, breaking just a little bit later and he's gonna end up settling back behind us. So we are able to get ahead of him before getting onto the mountain, which is fantastic. That could make the difference between us and Yolgon except he's five seconds ahead of us on the road. So for us to gain five seconds in one lap, we would need to, I mean, basically we would need him to hit the wall like four or five times, potentially like spin out. And I mean, what are the chances of that realistically? As he goes through, I think this is turn like six or turn five, he slides out a little bit too much throttle, rear end into the wall. That's gonna be some chunky damage to uh, his rear left fender, especially probably some sort of steering damage. It could have messed up his alignment, especially with that rear left tire going through or heading towards uh, skyline. And he's gonna go very wide here, jump the curb, slide over the dirt, try and catch it, end up locking his brakes and then getting on the throttle here as he definitely should be slowing down into the wall twice. And he's gonna ride that wall all of the way around. We were able to catch him at this point looking to go up the inside get absolutely fucked as he bangs into the wall and hits us and then he ends sideways in the wall now uh that did give us some pretty significant steering damage we are literally crab walking down the conrad at this point we have enough room behind us that we should be safe so unless i bin it which uh you can tell my steering is not straight so there is a possibility of us spinning it, but we're gonna just limp it home. We've got, I think we have like six seconds to be in behind us. And by the time we cross the final corner, we're safe, baby. Crossing the line in P8, a recovery that I had to be satisfied with. I was absolutely blessed by the iRacing gods for all of the freebies I was given this race. Don't think I would have been able to do that without those. Here are the results. Crossing the line in P8 from, I think we went down to P20 at one point. 
can't be can not be upset with that the game literally won i rating and we lost a little bit of safety rating i mean we basically didn't move we just kind of broke even across the board which is great joey ended in p4 gaining uh quite a bit of i rating and safety rating for himself if you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me please check out my channel or some other videos there and i'm sure that you will enjoy those as well